Hello and welcome to this live broadcast uh, brought to you a brand new show, Green as Gold. This uh, program is the first in a series that will focus on the importance of Zimbabwe uh, transitioning to the use of renewable energy, uh, interrogating effectiveness of government policies in achieving this, as well as opportunities arising for entrepreneurs within this uh, transition. I'm Blessing Munazi. Now this show is brought to you by Zimpapers Television Network, ZTN, in partnership with Hivos uh, through through its green and inclusive energy initiative, uh, which seeks to help alleviate the energy poverty situation in Southern Africa. Today, we will be focusing on energy and cooking during COVID-19 pandemic. And to tackle this, I'm joined in the studio by two guests. I'm gonna ask them to introduce themselves, us, uh, starting, of course, with uh, the lady. Okay, uh, greetings, everybody. My name is Martha Mlambo from Zimbabwe Women's Resource Center Network. I work as a project officer responsible for the Gender and Information Program. Um, maybe just a brief background, background to our organization. We are a women's organization that uh, believes in the um, uh, power of information uh, to make sure that uh, uh, women are, empo are empowered, girls are empowered in all sources of their life. Mad about women. Yes, we are mad about Thank women. Thank you, Martha, uh, um, for coming to the program, uh, sir. Good afternoon, guest. My name is Wellington Madumira. I work for Zero Regional Environment Organization as a project manager responsible for advocacy work on land, climate change, and also energy issues in, in Zimbabwe. Just a brief background about uh, Zero Regional Environment Organization. It's a local NGO that is uh, working on advocacy work on issues to do with the energy, land, and climate change to make sure that the voice of the voiceless is heard uh, by youth bearers. Thank you so much, uh, Wellington. Now, feel free to engage us uh, during the course of uh, today's show uh, through our social media platforms on Facebook at Zim Papers TV Network, on YouTube, just ZTN, on uh, Twitter, our handle is at ZTN News. Our producers are on standby to forward your questions to our panelists uh, during the course of the show. Now, Martha, uh, we've got the global pandemic that we're dealing with, and we're talking about cooking today. Mm -hmm. But more specifically, there's an issue of Clean cooking, can you tell us what is clean cooking? Okay, uh, when we're talking about clean cooking, we are talking about using um, uh, sources of energy that do not emit lots of pollution. For example, uh, we're talking about using electricity for cooking, and we use when you're talking about electricity, we're talking about hydroelectricity, not the one that, that we produce from, from coal. And also we're talking about um, using uh, solar energy, because now they are very good uh, pressure cookers that are that are actually uh, uh, that use uh, solar for cooking we also have lpg gas there is um, ethanol and there is gel that can be actually used that do not emit lots of pol pollution that can end up uh, um, polluting the, the the environment in which uh, the person who's cooking uh, is around and even uh, causing the damage to, to the climate itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, now, now uh, Wellington, if, if we look, uh, we find that uh, Zimbabwe mostly relies on biomass uh, for their thermal needs. Um, just from what um, uh, you know, Martha is saying, uh, do we have an opportunity to actually uh, you know, disseminate more information towards a clean cooking and offer solutions? Yeah, I think it's really important to disseminate uh, information about clean cooking because currently as a, as a nation we've got a newly drafted renewable energy policy which we think should be disseminated maybe in all languages to make sure that everyone understands what is in the, in the renewable energy policy so that even when, they, when the independent power producers are implementing their projects they are making use of that uh, renewable energy policy because I think there are quite a number of incentives that are that are being talked about in that renewable energy policy, which is really an opportunity for investors also to invest into, into clean cooking. Because from um, most studies, you realize that even at household level, mm -hmm. the much uh, like the uh, cooking sector is requires more energy than any other sector. You can't compare uh, energy for cooking and energy for lighting. You realize that uh, energy for cooking, the, the, the demand is, is really much higher. higher. Mm -hmm. It's much higher as compared to energy for lighting. So it's important to, to highlight awareness raising on energy for cooking, where like currently in Zimbabwe, we can make use of uh, biodigesters. I think uh, Mother also talked about it. Mm -hmm. We can make use of biodigesters. We can make use of um, uh, hydroelectric, the one that she also alluded to. But uh, besides just talking of clean cooking, we can also make use of improved uh, stoves that are, re that are really 
also available in, in Zimbabwe. Where we are saying instead of just using open fire, you can have improved cuckoo stoves, which is good, more efficient than our open fire, mm -hmm. which is also a plus that can also be added to that. Now, now Martha, uh, is there a link uh, between clean cooking and uh, you know the global uh, COVID-19 pandemic? Yes, definitely there is. Um, because when you're talking about clean cooking, as I said earlier on, there are certain ways, or I mean, there are certain uh, sources of energy that you can use that are clean. But you find that most people, because of uh, poverty, they are resorting to using certain uh, forms of uh, energy that are actually uh, polluting the air. For example, they use firewood, they use cow dung, some use plastics, some use agriculture waste. All those uh, emit lots of pollution. So at the end of the day, you find that the person who's cooking and the, those that are around them are actually exposed to um, uh, lots of uh, respiratory uh, challenges because they are inhaling lots of smoke and other you know, gases that we cannot see. And now, uh, when we look at COVID-19, COVID-19 is a res respiratory uh, um, uh, problem. I mean, affects the rep respiratory system, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. So when already your respiratory system is uh, compromised because of the energy source that you've been uh, exposed to or that you've been using um, for, for, a, for, for a long time and your lungs are already weak or your chest or your, your, your heart is already weak, mm -hmm. you find that the moment that you get in, in contact with, 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 the, with, with the virus, you are at risk of, contra of contracting the disease quickly and uh, faster than anybody, I mean, s and than somebody who's, who, who maybe who uses clean sources of energy. Mm -hmm. And now the challenge is that um, most of the people in Africa, they actually use uh, uh, um, biomass mm -hmm. for cooking. And uh, f to some extent, it's, it's a very serious uh, uh, challenge because you find that when it hit, uh, when, when, when COVID-19 hit uh, uh, Europe, mm -hmm. the people that were affected, most of them, they don't use uh, those kinds of energy sources that I'm talking about mm -hmm. that, uh, that uh, end up. Articulate. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. So you find um, when it, now that we are having more cases uh, in Africa and even in Zimbabwe, uh, the cases are actually increasing uh, maybe on a daily basis or maybe on a, on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. according to statistics that, that we're getting from the, from the Minister of Health. So you find that it's actually a scare because you find that the moment that we have got more cases of people getting um, uh, the, the virus and yet we don't have uh, a good uh, and, uh, sources of energy or clean sources of energy in place, that can then be able to cater for people to use for cooking, then we, we are in trouble. Mm -hmm. Because the rate at which that, uh, the, pandem uh, the pandemic is going to kill people might actually be worse than mm -hmm. maybe what we, s we saw in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. Then also, when we're looking at cooking, we are actually encouraged that you, know, you must cook your food very well. Mm -hmm. You know, you, 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 you need to have enough uh, energy so that you can cook. So you can ima imagine a woman who's using cow dung to cook it means that they, 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 they try to make it so quick, I mean, to cook quickly so that they preserve or they, 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 they run away from the smoke. Or at the end of the day, you end up consuming food, food maybe that is not thoroughly cooked. Mm -hmm. so, and that also is a challenge because if you eat uh, food that is, uh, that, cooked. That, is uh, that is not well cooked mm -hmm. or that might have been like, uh, that, that, might, that, might have been, uh, that might have some uh, traces of, of COVID-19, it means that you end up consuming the, the virus directly mm -hmm. from the food. So that is how uh, the, the link is. The link, uh, yes. Between cleaning, uh, cl uh, co uh, clean cooking solutions mm -hmm. and uh, the pandemic. Now, Wellington, yes. as, as Martha was, was just responding there, I thought of, uh, you know, the setup in our rural areas. And uh, you find that 65% of Zimbabwe's population is in the rural areas. We're, we're talking about electrification yeah. being only at 13%. Now, the setup is such that people cook indoors. Could uh, you know cooking outdoors be a short-term solution that could maybe reduce the amount of uh, particulates that one inhales? And what will be the short to medium-term solutions to try and get around the situation? Yeah, cooking outdoors might be a solution, but from another angle, it might not be a solution. Why? Because it consumes more. It means you need more uh, firewood. It means you are going to cut down trees to, for you to make. It's like uh, when you are using open fire, you need, let's say, 3 kg of, uh, of firewood. But when you are using, when you are maybe when you are using uh, improved cook stoves, you need, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, 1 kg for you to, to, to complete your, 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 your meal. 
So what it means is that the moment you start to co cooking outside the, the house or start to use open fire, it means you are going also to go a number of times to the, to the forest to make sure that you fetch, you fetch firewood. Mm -hmm. And at the, end of, at the end of the day, you are also affecting the, especially the, the girl child mm -hmm. who is supposed to go and fetch firewood and come back again to, the, to, to make sure that the food is there on, on the table. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not, a, it's not really a solution, but maybe what we can use is like improved uh, uh, stoves. We are saying let's use our improved total stove, which can make use of the twigs, which can make use of uh, a little amount of firewood mm -hmm. than our open fire. Now, you obviously mentioned one solution there in in, in terms of uh, you know what we can use and as as an alternative. Mm -hmm. Can you highlight uh, Zimbabwe's diversified renewable energy potential? Yeah, there's um, Zimbabwe. I think it has got a lot of potential in terms of uh, renewable energy. Because if you look at like our hydro, we've got large hydro, we've got other dams that have got uh, capacity to generate electricity uh, using hydro, which are not being utilized. We've got solar throughout the whole year, almost uh, more than 75% uh, of 365 mm -hmm. days. 20 we've mi per square meter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. just imagine, we are not making use of, 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 of that. Then we have also managed to realize that through some studies that have been done, we have potential of generating electricity from wind. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, our studies, I think they backed it up to 1964. That's when there were studies to do with the, with the, with the generating electricity from, from wind. But my thinking is like, uh, we, we are supposed to have more like an assessment of the potential, especially on 80 meters above, uh, above the ground. Because currently some of the, uh, the studies, they are just focusing on three meters from the ground and the like, of which uh, wind, wind speeds are uh, quite low. Uh, uh, speeds are, are quite low also. Then we also realize that Agriculture is also consuming a lot of a lot of energy, but from my my perspective, I think we can make use of wind. You know, in the past when we were young, we used to see commercial farmers where we've got those wind turbines, uh, wind turbines uh, drawing up water for irrigation and the like. Even uh, farmers they can also make use of, of that also. Then also we've got also geothermal. We also need some studies on that on that mm -hmm. area to make sure that how much. Uh, are we able to, to, to produce? I think in the renewable energy policy, there are some statistics that really specify to say geothermal has got the potential of this. Mm -hmm. But still, we need uh, some studies to make sure that uh, these uh, uh, facts they, they generate evidence. Mm -hmm. So that even when we are, when we are uh, luring uh, more like investors, investors they've uh, got something that is tangible to say, mm -hmm. this study was, was, was done maybe in this year mm -hmm. to make sure that maybe when they are implementing the, the, the project, it will be mm -hmm. a success. Now, Martha, c can you tell us a little bit more about energy poverty um, and whether this leaves the girl child and the woman, uh, you know, at greater risk of its implications? Yeah, um, you know, when, when there is energy poverty, I think, let me start by saying, uh, there is a statement that says that uh, uh, energy poverty uh, wears the face of a woman or has got the face of a woman. Mm -hmm. Why? When you need to cook or when you need to prepare a meal for, 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 for your family, it's usually the mother or the girl child in the household mm -hmm. that is looked up to, to make sure that there is a fire or there is a so some source of energy so that there is cooking. So you find that when there is energy poverty, it will be more strenuous on the woman or the girl child. For example, where there is no electricity, the girl child or the woman or whoever is responsible for cooking at that particular household is to wake up very early to go and maybe look for firewood. They come back and then they set up a fire. And when they set up that fire, and when the, they are using biomass, as I said uh, earlier on, mm -hmm. the smoke usually that is produced, and maybe uh, you're in an enclosed uh, house, is just too much. And you know, with fire, from time to time, you have to be blowing it so that you know, you've got enough, um, you've got a flame that can uh, prepare your food. So when you're blowing it, you're also simultaneously inhaling. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of um, um, uh, smoke that might end up also just uh, uh, infecting your, 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 your respiratory system, as I said earlier on. Then, other than that, the women spend more time uh, focusing on gathering firewood or gathering uh, these the, the biomass that they use to cook, and uh, that will take up their time to do other that, that so that they, they do not be able to do productive um, um, work or other. Um, things that, that can actually bring them uh, income mm -hmm. or that can actually empower them. For example, if it, it's a girl, ch girl child, even going, w w 
under normal circumstances when all those schools are open, when the girls had to go to fetch firewood first before mm -hmm. they go to school. Mm -hmm. Already by the time that they come back, they are very tired. The time that they, 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 they light a, a fire and prepare a, for, the, for, the, for the rest of the family to, 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 to start their day, they go, they go to school very tired. They will not be participative in class mm -hmm. as the, the boy child. And so they still have homework at the end yes, of the day. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, and they still have homework, and they have to participate in class, and they have to read their books. So you find that it will take up more, more of, their, of, of, their, of their productive time instead of them concentrating more on other productive uh, uh, responsibilities mm -hmm. or work. They will end up just focusing on what, what do I need to do, uh, do so that uh, I put food, food on the table for mm -hmm. the family, mm -hmm. which is actually uh, uh, very, uh, very difficult. And when you look at our uh, economy, as I said earlier on, uh, most of the, uh, the, the, the people are actually relying on uh, informal uh, trading. The informal sector is actually sustaining us. Mm -hmm. And it, is m it has got more women than mm -hmm. men. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the time that the woman has to wake up, make sure that they get the firewood before they go, for example, to Mbari. Mm -hmm. Because we, 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 when I'm talking about uh, firewood, we're not just let's not just focus about women in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. We also, also need in the to urban. yes mm -hmm. in the urban. What's like right now? Look at the uh, rate at which people are, are actually getting these new stands. New suburbs are sprouting everywhere in Harare. And they're yet to be electrified. Yes, there's no electricity. Mm -hmm. So that means they've got to look for alternative um, uh, sources of energy, and most of them they can afford uh, a biomass. Mm -hmm. to, to for cooking. Mm -hmm. So you find that one, the, 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 the woman has to make sure that there is firewood before they even start their day. The, the, the first thing is to make sure that there is uh, power, um, energy for, the, for, the, for, for cooking. So already they are at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Then now just looking at the time that we are in right now, we are actually entering in, into our winter. And as a mother, you don't want to bath your children with cold water. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that there is warm water for your children. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was thinking that there was a time that I, I was traveling uh, by road uh, in some suburb in South Africa. I noticed, you know, almost that in that suburb, almost every household had, had, had solar geysers. And I was just uh, inquiring how people can afford that. And I was actually told that it's actually a government initiative. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if such initiatives can be done where we can have solar geysers mm -hmm. that are actually... Uh, financed or resourced by the government. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how, but I'm sure there is a way. If other governments are doing it, I'm sure our government can also maybe partner with other uh, in, uh, investors like what uh, Wellington alluded to earlier on, mm -hmm. that we need to uh, attract investors that can bring in money or that can bring in technologies that mm -hmm. can then uh, bridge that gap so that there is no energy poverty. Mm -hmm. That can got more, more renewables yes, being, being taken on Yes, board. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. that so that we, we've got more. Because because if we, we, we rely on our on, on our on our own um, uh, financial resources, maybe we, are, we won't be able to cope at the mo in, in the meantime. Because mm -hmm. this is not something that we can just do overnight. Mm -hmm. Because it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Wellington, a as Martha was just uh, giving a contribution, she she mentioned the issue of uh, solar geysers, and um, I know the energy policy uh, highlights that you know we've got plans to install uh, maybe two hundred and fifty thousand. That's the target. Yeah. Um, is is being incorporated into yeah. new buildings going forward. Now, that's obviously policy and uh, legal framework. Looking at policy advocacy, the uh, policy framework, the legal framework, has it been sufficient or is it slowing down the establishment of sustainable energy solutions that are renewable are driven? Yeah, I think to some extent it's really slowing down. Was for you, I think it almost took uh, 10 years for us to go come up with this uh, renewable energy policy document. Mm -hmm. So imagine some of the inputs were done like in 20, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this policy, when it was launched, from my own understanding, it was already outdated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like we are launching something that we say it's new, but it's already outdated. Uh, but uh, our, our government is also doing a lot in uh, making sure that we have got uh, access to renewable energy. I remember uh, Martha was also talking about issues to do with the energy efficient. I know there is an SI unit that speaks to energy efficient, mm -hmm. where there was the burning of uh, those, our usual bulb, mm -hmm. our long term bulb, 100 watts, 60 watts, mm -hmm. to in trying to make sure that we save our, our electricity through the use of uh, you know, the energy savers. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the initiatives that the uh, government is currently also doing. Then they've also ma managed to ban the use of electrical geysers to make sure that they are also promoting the solar geysers. Mm -hmm. So there's an SI that speaks also to that, to make sure that there is, uh, we, we make sure that 
communities they make use of solar solar geysers. Then there is another SI also that is talking about uh, quality of uh, renewable energy products. I remember before uh, Green uh, and Inclusive Energy Program in, in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. I remember uh, people used to pay jute when you are bringing in, it. when you are importing the those uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, solar-related uh, pro uh, products. Mm -hmm. But we cannot give the whole credit to GIE because there are a number of forces that really push to make sure that the government also introduces an SI that really speaks to quality control measures on, on uh, imported uh, material. So at the end of the day, from our, our own uh, engagement with the citizens, some of the reason why communities they are not engaging in like in renewable energies because they've got a misconception of uh, how solar really works. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there are fake products on the on the market. Mm -hmm. But currently, I remember at the website of Zera, there are quite a number of uh, uh, like uh, companies which they really say this they've got certified products, uh, mm -hmm. certified by by SARS, mm -hmm. which is something that really need to be to be communicated maybe to the rural community and also even to the urban community. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we always talk about rural, rural, rural. But even the urban communities, they are not aware of that. You know, imagine we are paying, currently we are, we are paying more than uh, 300 RTGS mm -hmm. for you to have electricity throughout the, the whole month, a normal household. Mm -hmm. But if you have got, if you do your one payment of uh, solar system, it means your are, you are woman drive for the next 20 years for the whole left side of that solar panel. So at the end of the day, that solar system that we are talking about, we are not saying uh, it should be like in rural areas alone, but even in urban areas, we can also go to that way. Then also looking at the Sustainable Energy for All, which was an initiative that was launched in, in 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, around 2012, uh, 2012, 2013, Zimbabwe started to develop action agenda and investment prospectors, which was a good document trying to attract investors in the into the renewable, renewable energy, energy sector. sector. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that document didn't pass through. Up to, a, I think, uh, around 2015, I think uh, maybe it was because of funding, uh, uh, there was no communication about the uh, action agenda investment prospector up to date. But that document was really a good document. So at the end of the day, there are some policies that we, uh, uh, that we develop, but we don't more like... We don't finalize them, mm -hmm. in short. Mm -hmm. Then also, the other issue is like implementation. You know, Kenya doesn't have the renewable energy policy currently, mm -hmm. but their energy access is more than Zimbabwe. Even in Zimbabwe, before having this renewable energy policy, we were doing some projects on renewable energy. We were implementing other projects on renewable energy. It might be private sector, it might be CSOs. They were working on renewable energy. So you're saying we need a um, policy environment mm -hmm. That is conducive for investors to invest into the renewable energy. Uh, our, policy, our policies, uh, you know, backed up by legal instruments. Because it's one thing to, to have renewables being mentioned only at policy, mm -hmm. uh, policy level mm -hmm. and ha not have, you know, the legislative framework that then uh, goes on to the implementation stage. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, as, as an organization, we, have, uh, we, we are also going to, to advocate for us to have more like an energy energy law, which is something that we think maybe it is going to, to, to really, more like a binding document that really say, if you don't do this, you are going to face this. Because you are talking of us having, uh, practicing energy efficiency and the like, but there's not something that is binding to each mm -hmm. and every stakeholder to say, if you don't do this, you are going to face this penalty. Mm -hmm. So currently, we have got this po energy policy, we've got the, uh, like the energy policy of 2012, and renewable energy policy of uh, 2020, then also other uh, like uh, the national, uh, the NDC document, mm -hmm. national determined contribution document, it also speaks of 33% emission reduction by 2030. Mm -hmm. But uh, is, that, uh, is that a realistic target as a nation? What are, we, what, what are we currently doing? You know, we're talking about SE4O, which target to have more like 100% renewable. Mm -hmm. But currently, what percentage are we at? We target 5%. We, we are at five percent, mm -hmm. provided we exclude the the, the large hydro. We are at five percent, but our target is hundred percent. How many years left it for us to get it to twenty thirty? It's like ten years mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. So what have we done for the past uh, from twenty eleven up to twenty up to twenty twenty? What have we done? So sometimes we need to to use the pace that was uh, that we were experienced uh, previously to make sure that we we 
we, we don't just say, if South Africa say our target is this, then we, as Zimbabwe also say this is also going to be our target. Mm -hmm. this, we are supposed to have more like consultation, uh, other stakeholders like the private sector companies, the CSOs, the citizens themselves, they've got a voice towards uh, energy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because energy is an enabler of all developmental sectors. Mm -hmm. If you are energy poor, mm -hmm. there's uh, no sustainable development in a nation. Mm -hmm. Someone is saying, uh, in future, the war that is going to be, the war that is going to be there, it's like the war of energy. To say this energy, you don't have energy, so we are going to control you because you don't have energy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's difficult for us as a nation to rely on importing electricity from South Africa, getting mm -hmm. electricity from some, somewhere else. But here in Zimbabwe, we have got quite a number of resources which have got potential of generating uh, electricity. Look at the Eastern Islands. They've got potential of generating electricity from those mean hydro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we tap into that, into those technologies, I think we can, we can go far. Mm -hmm. Now, Martha, what can be done to amplify you know, the voice of the vulnerable groups, uh, especially um, with regards to the challenges and effects mm -hmm. uh, that they're facing during the, this pandemic? Okay, um, I think first of all, it's very important to, to include everybody. Because the challenge is that when you're talking about some of these policies that are being uh, are drawn or that, are, uh, that, are com that, that the, 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 the policymakers are coming up with, I'm not so sure how uh, they've gone to the grassroots and reached the last person uh, in the community to make sure that that person's voice is also like part of that policy. Because some of these things, it's like, uh, some of these policies are being imposed on people that, are, that don't that lack knowledge or that haven't even contributed to the coming up of those policies. So when, we have, when we're coming up with such, such policies, we also need to, to, to involve the people that are affected by those policies. That's the first thing that mm -hmm. we should do. Then also hear what they say, because sometimes they've got better solutions to their problems, but mm -hmm. they maybe they don't have the means. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if we've got the means and we listen to them and we work together, you find that we might actually have a, a w better solution to the uh, energy problems that we are having at the, at the moment. Because like right now we are looking at the um, short term uh, um, uh, Solution. solutions to the COVID-19 uh, uh, challenge. We are talking about wearing our masks and all, and, and you know, the, the, the short term and not looking at, at the future. Okay, what if we wake up tomorrow and there is no COVID anymore? Have we made plans on how we are going to cope after the lockdown, in terms of our energy mm -hmm. uh, provision. I think all those things, they also come from the people at the grassroots, from the people that are affected, the, the people in the communities. Because like right now, even our, our, our um, uh, health um, institutions, mm -hmm. some of them, they actually lack uh, proper or, um, uh, energy uh, sources. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they run without electricity and some, but we've got, so, for, just for lighting, for example, because we know that solar is very good for lighting and uh, most even, uh, how, uh, most households, they're actually moving towards that, even though some bogus uh, 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 distributors are coming, have been coming in and uh, supplying people with, uh, with, with uh, fake material. Mm -hmm. But you find that even in hospitals, there are reports that nurses at some point were using a torch, I mean, using their, their phones mm -hmm. to actually deliver babies mm -hmm. because there's no electricity in the clinics where they are working. So you find that is very challenging because this woman who is the nurse at, at mm -hmm. this hospital, who is, who, is the, who is the midwife at this hospital, they are facing this challenge of using their torch to make sure that they save a life. Mm -hmm. And when they get, uh, th they get home, they also have to look for firewood, they, of, they have mm -hmm. to look for alternative sources for energy. So you find, as I said earlier on, that um, gap continues mm -hmm. uh, to, to grow. What has been the, the biggest challenge mm -hmm. um, preventing us, you know, from taking advantage of uh, this solar potential? You know, you mentioned solar potential, we've got mm -hmm. geothermal, we've got wind as well there. Mm -hmm. What has prevented us from actually, you know, taking advantage of the natural resources that we have in terms of energy? Okay, uh, for me, I, I think the, the natural, it's, it's not just about taping uh, uh, solar energy from nowhere. There are technologies that are associated with them. Mm -hmm. So they need finances. Mm -hmm. So there's a need for um, a deli deliberate effort to actually budget. When, for example, in the, in the national budget, there should be like a certain amount that is actually uh, that should be set, set aside towards mm -hmm. the improvement of, the, of, of, of technologies that 
uh, tap into renewable uh, sources of energy so that we can have those. Because if we don't have that at national level, it will be very difficult mm -hmm. because there are some social services that are provided by the government that need uh, the government to intervene. For, uh, at personal level, people can find uh, one or two things to do, but there are some, some, some things that the government would actually need to do, social services that the government need to provide. So the gov the, is the national budget, is it speaking to all those needs that we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Is renewable energy being pr prioritized when you're talking about the, the national budget? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that we're talking about, finances. Green is Gold, this is the program brought to you by Hivos in partnership with Zim Papers Television Network. Uh, we're talking about the Green and Inclusive Energy Initiative. Today we're particularly looking at uh, clean energy solutions uh, in the wake of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, do get in touch uh, through our social media platforms, uh, Zim Papers TV Network on Facebook at uh, ZTN News on Twitter, YouTube at ZTN, and also our website ztn.co.zw. Don't go away. Uh, we take a short breather. When we do come back, we will be looking at uh, financing uh, priorities, uh, just like uh, Martha highlighted here, and also the issue of integration of uh, the renewable energy effort. Welcome back. Uh, this is the program Green is Gold, brought to you by Hivos in partnership with Zim Papers Television Network uh, under their banner, the Green and Inclusive Energy Initiative. Now, Maxwell, before we went for the breather there, uh, Martha did highlight the issue of, uh, you know, taking on board views that are coming in from the people that are actually affected. Uh, from your point of view, the social development effort through renewables has it been collaborative and integrative? Maybe, yeah, before that, maybe uh, let me talk about uh, the financial. Oh, uh, the, the point that she, she, yeah, she highlighted, she highlighted when yeah. we left. Um, I think one of finances the... Finances as, as, as an impediment to the progression of renewables. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, in Zimbabwe, it's more like, more like uh, local financial institutions are not funding renewable energy currently. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we really... Uh, we are also focusing on to make sure that our local finances they also uh, finance the renewable energy sector because the, maybe they are not seeing business side of it but some of them they will say if you give them a loan it will take more like 20 years for them to to pay back mm -hmm. so it's more like their payback period for renewable energy is very is very uh, low mm -hmm. so most funding they are coming from like international institutions or international donors of which our uh, local companies they are not able to access that fund mm -hmm. but sometimes they need you to have uh, maybe uh, in the past years you should have been maybe administered uh, five million of which our current uh, organization or stakeholders that are there or companies that are there in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. maybe your 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 you have administered like hundred thousand for the past two years so you are not you, you don't you don't meet the criteria for you to to get that mm -hmm. that support then he also on, on another issue it's like uh, giving a, a case study of tanzania tanzania uh, i think in the past five years their energy access was around also around 40 percent 50 percent but currently it's around 85 percent mm -hmm. uh, According to our own analysis as an, as an organization, we also do budget tracking. You know, when the minister announced the budget, we mm -hmm. also look at what amount of money was allocated towards, like, a Minister of Energy and Power Development. For the past five years, Minister of Energy usually gets around 0.2% of the total budget, of which, uh, from our own understanding, it's like, energy is more like an enabler of each and every sector. Mm -hmm. You cannot talk of command agriculture without talking of command energy. Mm -hmm. Mother was, uh, was talking about uh, having a health facility without access to energy. How are you going to preserve the, 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 like the, the medicine? Mm -hmm. how, is, how are you going to make sure that uh, 
uh, women that are going to give birth are also going to do it in a proper environment. So at the end of the day, it's like we need to we need more like a multi stakeholder approach when we are discussing about about energy. Mm -hmm. We need to uh, like to link energy with what we call nexus issues, mm -hmm. like energy and agriculture, energy and uh, and uh, and health. So if you link it that way, I think we we, we, we can go far as 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 a, as a nation. When you are developing, for example, the agriculture police, they also need to incorporate issues to do with the, with the energy. Why? Because for the agriculture police to be implemented well, they need like like energy also. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I've realized that uh, we need also to, to make sure that the government is also supporting this renewable energy initiative through financial support. Not to say you're allocating, you know, there's a difference between allocation and disbursement. Mm -hmm. Allocation is around 0.2%. What about disbursement? Mm -hmm. Now, now you, you mentioned that issue, um, the issue of prioritization. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the targets that we have, mm -hmm. uh, renewable energy, according to the national energy policy, we're targeting mm -hmm. 1,100 uh, megawatts by 2025. Yeah. Um, that's maybe 14, 15 percent of whatever we're targeting in in 2025. Mm -hmm. Is our approach to renewables the correct one? Because it seems that we're taking renewables as an alternative, um, and yet it seems to offer efficiencies. Yeah, sometimes the way we develop our 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 targets is very is very uh, is very worrisome. Was uh, at some point I, I, I once said. Uh, in the past, the rate at which we were like, getting the energy access was around 0.3%. Mm -hmm. So for us to get up to 100% renewable, we need, we need to move at a pace of 4.4% per annum. Okay. So looking at someone who has at 0.3%, how difficult will it be to make sure that you are at 4.4%? So at the end of the day, it's, these targets sometimes they are difficult to, 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 to reach. Mm -hmm. But uh, provided we've got like good strategies, maybe we try to lure more investors in, the, in that sector, giving them some incentives, some incentives, and also some tax holidays. I think we can we can get there. Morocco was at uh, around fifty percent in 2010, but I think in 2015 it was almost ninety something percent. So I think it's possible, provided the environment is conducive. We are also encouraging these independent power producers to make sure that they are also investing in the in the renewable energy sector. Then the other problem that I've also realized is that uh, even it might be independent power producers or other CSOs, let's try to link um, energy and economic development. Mm -hmm. It's pointless for you to provide uh, like energy in an area where there is no an economic activity. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you provide, like for example, I come from Buera, you provide electricity to that area. There's no an economic activity that really makes sure that those, commun those uh, people that are residing there, they have the ability to pay for electricity. Mm -hmm. So you should link your energy supply and also the ability to pay for the, for the community. So create mm -hmm. business within that uh, energy sector. Mm -hmm. Martha, you wanted to make an addition? Okay, I wanted to say, um, like you said earlier on, that the, the challenge is that we are looking at renewable energy as an alternative and not as a source of energy that is uh, vital for our daily living. Mm -hmm. Because if we shift that our mindsets and start looking at it as a very important source of energy, and we really, I'm sure that uh, there is a way that we can then tap into solar energy, that we can use uh, biogas and all those other sources of renewable and clean energy. The challenge is the mindset I'm, uh, from where I'm actually seeing it. Mm -hmm. When we have, um, we make a deliberate effort to really say, okay, renewable energy is the way to go and this is what we are supposed to be doing and we plan for it i'm sure there is a way but the challenge is that you know it's an alternative so anything that is an alternative it's a substitute so mm -hmm. if something is a, is a substitute we will not focus on on mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and for, for example like right now we are all coming back to the COVID era there is a continuous um talk about online learning e-learning and all that mm -hmm. and i'm actually wondering have we even stopped to think about how e-learning can um, uh, be possible in the absence of uh, uh, reliable sources of energy? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And many children actually uh, uh, being left behind because they don't have uh, good sources of uh, energy uh, to power up their laptops or even the phone because mm -hmm. some actually go to the neighbor to actually just charge their phone or to charge their laptop. So. So some of those things, like uh, Wellington was, sailing, uh, was saying earlier on, 
we need to integrate or to, to, to actually involve all sectors. When you're talking about uh, renewable energy or when you're talking about energy, it's not just about the energy sector. Mm -hmm. We are talking about the energy sector, how it contributes to our de de uh, development when you're talking about health issues, when you're talking about education, we're talking about uh, uh, entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. How can mm -hmm. we then make sure that all those uh, sectors, they're speaking to each other? Because without energy, I don't, I don't see anything happening uh, uh, that is productive because we, we, can, we cannot just focus on, 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 on having a good uh, uh, command of agriculture, as you, as, as you were saying earlier on, without mm -hmm. having command uh, uh, energy, for example. Mm -hmm. Because we need to, and if even co command education, something like that, so that these are integrated. Every 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 other sector should uh, every sector should have a, a say in how we can have renewable energy contributing towards a better future for mm -hmm. for, for for our country. Mm -hmm. Because like looking at the uh, SDG uh, SDG seven, which talks about uh, re uh, reliable and uh, clean efficient and efficient uh, efficient uh, source of energy, uh, you find that. We are, we are, this target is about, we, 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 we are, we're saying we need to do this by 2030, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Can we be able to do that in 10 years? 10 years is a very short, short time when we're talking about these technologies. Mm -hmm. So already, I think we're going to fall into the same trip that we fell a long back when we're focusing on the millennium. Mil exactly. Mm -hmm. we, end up, you know, we end up you know, reaching you know, the end of the, 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 the target without actually achieving with, with, with documents like, for example, we've got this policy that we've got here, but mm -hmm. the actual actual um, um, activities on the ground we will not have. Then also the other um, um, issue that uh, um, Wellington highlighted about economic activity should actually be linked to en any energy uh, 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 provision uh, that can be here uh, or project that can be in any area mm -hmm. because i remember there is a there's a time that we were actually just as 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 as, as, as uh, gie we we're just going to, uh, around uh, zimbabwe just seeing what is happening as far as our energy provision in zimbabwe is concerned we, we went to um, some some areas that i might not uh, mention here mm. what i noticed is that Yes, there might be electricity in that area. There might be uh, uh, hydroelectricity that is being produced in that area. But you find the people that are benefiting from that area are not the, 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 the people who must, they're just consuming. Mm -hmm. There's no production at all. So uh, in, in such a case, you find that we will not earn anything from that. At least if there's uh, an, an, an energy project, it should be linked maybe to agriculture. Are they using so it for gardening? Yes, mm -hmm. so that we, we, we become productive. Uh, is, there, is there an agricultural uh, 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 activity that's happening that can contribute maybe to the income, that can maybe contribute to the uh, uh, um, um, maintaining of the, uh, of the turbines and mm -hmm. all that is needed mm -hmm. in that area? Then also there's that, uh, there is also the issue of donor, donor syndrome. Mm -hmm. Because there is an area where there was uh, um, a donation of solar panels in, in a certain area again. Mm -hmm. And these solar panels, they are very huge. But now it's like a, a white elephant now. Because people are actually looking at it, at it as a donor uh, a, 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 a project. It's not, it's not their project. Mm -hmm. So there's no community ownership. So as mm -hmm. I said earlier on, there is need for consultation. Mm -hmm. Consult the people on the ground. What is it that they need? What is it that, that they think can help them mm -hmm. to meet their energy needs that is clean and that is renewable? Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that you know you are involving them step by step from the, the beginning not to just come in and you impose because the moment that you do that people will not feel uh, like they own the, 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 the project or the initiative mm -hmm. is the information dissemination uh, is effective to make them aware of the benefits yeah. you know of, of, of the intended uh, projects and the long-term mm -hmm. even benefits that will come out of that is the information and awareness up to scratch? Yeah, you know, the, the information uh, dissemination is not up to scratch. Why I say that is because, because I think our government, um, uh, maybe we, we needs to be doing that and not to rely on CSOs. Because CSOs, most of the, the uh, civil society organizations, they work on uh, um, projects that maybe that have got a certain timeline. For example, mm -hmm. if, you, if, the, if, if you're, you are running a project on, en on renewable energy that's going for five years, mm -hmm. The moment that that five years expires, you f that that organization will start looking for money for other projects. Mm -hmm. Whatever comes, they if if it's it's agriculture, they shift focus 
and they run with what? So it's, it's about where the money is for most organizations. Mm -hmm. But if it's the government that is actually taking the effort to actually disseminate the information to make sure that people on the um, people in, in the in the rural areas at the grassroots grassroots levels are actually educated and have got the in, they've got information about these renewable energy sources and the, the dangers of uh, continuing to rely on um, biomass mm -hmm. for, for 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 energy. You find it will be uh, long lasting and more sustainable because it will be a, a government initiative. Mm -hmm. Because the government is there to stay. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. some some CSOs just ran for five years and they've been closed. Mm -hmm. But we've had the government is, is, is has always been there. Mm -hmm. So that's my, my, my contribution. Now, Wellington, the, the issue of collaboration and integration of the renewable energy um, effort has it been effective and um, also the decentralization of uh, renewable energy has it uh, been effective over the years? Yeah, I think uh, they have been effective, especially on the issue, on the last part of your, your question, decentralized renewable energy mm -hmm. technology. Uh, because, for example, if you, if you go to, to Manika Land, there are quite a number of decentralized systems which mm -hmm. are not connected like, to the main grid, mm -hmm. which are really effective. But on another note, it's like most of them, they are really supplying energy for lighting. So at the end of the day, we didn't address the energy needs of the community. Because mainly, uh, we need energy for cooking, mm -hmm. not for lighting. Mm -hmm. So most of these decentralized systems, they are provided, yeah, it's a way which is cheaper, faster way of uh, making sure that the, the, the marginalized community, they have access to electricity. But uh, on another note, supplying electricity for, for lighting only. So I think there's need more like to, to have more of these systems so that they, they, they form more like a hybrid system, to have more like a hybrid system, where we are saying you have got your solar, uh, 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 solar PV and also you've got your, your mini hydro. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, currently we are experiencing droughts in, in Zimbabwe. So some of the, these small hydro, they are not effective throughout the whole year. Mm -hmm. So they will last maybe for about four or five months after, after mm -hmm. rain season. Mm -hmm. Then from there, the, the no system is, is, is no longer working. So mm -hmm. at least if you come up with more like a hybrid system, for example, you've got your, 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 like I said, you've got your solar and also you've got your, your hydro. In the absence of, of, uh, of hydro, your solar right. is, now working, is now working. Then if you combine the energy for, from hydro and also energy from solar, maybe you can generate electricity for, for cooking. Solar alone for you to be able to generate electricity for cooking, it's really too expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's really a challenge. So that's why I'm saying there's need for you to have more like hybrid system. Hybrid system In yeah. other countries, if you've got a solar system like a tech clinic, you also have a biodigester at that same clinic mm -hmm. to make sure that biodigester is supplying electricity for, 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 um, for, for cooking and uh, solar energy is providing electricity for, for lighting. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I think there's need for us to synchronize those. Uh, and, that, and, and strike a balance. Also. Yeah, strike a balance, exactly. As we, as we head uh, to, towards the close, I'll, I'll just ask you to make your closing contributions uh, maybe th in 30 seconds, uh, starting with you, Martha. Okay, um, as I said earlier on, um, I feel um, energy poverty has the face of a, of a woman. So I think we should in, in integrate or in include women in all these issues. When we're talking about energy issues, when we're talking about renewable en energy issues, where are the women in uh, making sure that there is energy provision? They should be consulted and should they should actually be there in the deci decision making processes so that they also uh, contribute to what affects them. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Thank you so much, Martha. W Wellington? Yeah, I think uh, as a nation, we have got an appeal to, to climb if you are to reach 100% uh, renewable energy by 2030, because we are just remained with, the, with the 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I think, but with the right policies and also strategies and financial resources, I think we can, we can, we can have a, a, a greater progress in terms of making sure that everyone has access to, to electricity. Just have some statistics that I have. For example, in uh, 2010, there was just one megawatt of small hydro, mm -hmm. but 2018 was around 28 megawatts that was generated from, from this small hydro. Mm -hmm. Then grid connected solar, where we are saying we've got our solar PV, which is connected to the main grid. In 2010, we're having new. There was no any solar project that was uh, connected, connected to, the, to the main grid. But you know, the solar summit that was held in 1992, World Solar Summit was held in Zimbabwe in 1992. But up to now, up to 2010, we didn't have more like a solar farm and the like. But Zimbabwe, we experience, we've got quite uh, a number of days which has got total sunshine, which we can 
used to generate electricity. But in 2018, we've got 2.5 megawatts that was connected from that was connected to the main grid from the from the from solar. Then the grid increased by 300 megawatts mm -hmm. between uh, 2017 and 2018. So I think it's possible, provided we've got uh, policies like the renewable energy policy with it, but we need to implement what is in the renewable energy policy. Mm -hmm. So provided we implement the, what is in our policy documents, I think we can we can go far. Thank you so much, uh, Wellington. It has indeed been a call to action, uh, just like the United Nations has been calling for action towards the SDGs. Now, as we come to the end of our program, uh, Green as Gold, I'd like to thank my guests uh, for today, Martha Lambo, Projects Officer, uh, Gender and Information with the Zimbabwe Women's Resource Center Network, as well as uh, Wellington Madumira, uh, who is a Projects Manager from the Zimbabwe Energy Research Organizations. Uh, many thanks also to our partner, Hivos, who made this program possible through their Green and Inclusive Energy Initiative, uh, which seeks to help alleviate the energy poverty situation in Southern Africa. Uh, today's program was the first in a series that will focus on the importance of Zimbabwe transitioning uh, to the use of renewable energy, interrogating effectiveness of government policies in achieving clean energy targets, as well as opportunities arising from entrepreneurs with a transition to uh, renewables. Now, go green, stay safe. After all, we do owe it to posterity. My name is Blessing Manazi. Good afternoon.